GMK Tech has a new mini PC. This is called the Evo T1, and it's powered this time around by Intel. It has the Core Ultra 9 285H. It has 16 cores, a turbo of 5.4 gigahertz, and the Arc 140T integrated graphics, which is very powerful. You can game at 1080p on lower kind of settings. I'll of course be demonstrating and showing a bit of that in this video. And it has Oculink 2 support with it, which means that you can run external GPUs at 63 gigabits per second through that, so faster than USB 4 ports that this does have. Now you can add an additional two SSDs to this model. It has three PCIe 4 slots in it. It's got two 2.5 gigabit LAN ports and Wi-Fi 6. It runs Windows 11 Pro. And the version they sent out to me is configured with a terabyte of storage and 64 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. It's so dim RAM, so it can also be upgraded. Included with their GMK Tech Evo T1, you'll find our power cable, HDMI cable. This right here is our Visa mounting bracket and the screws that you're going to need for that. And the power supply. So they must be using Garntech to get it this small. It is only 148.2 watts, but still a more compact size, which I like to see. Size-wise, this is bigger. This is not a mini PC size. For me, it's more of a small form factor PC because the mini PC, some of them are around about this kind of size here and a little bit shorter, even from GMK Tech themselves. So the Evo T1, a little bit bigger, but the width of it is about that of a soda can, even though this is not a real soda can. It is the exact same size as one, and you can see there, just to gauge how large it is for those of you out there that want to know what it's like. So on the bottom, we have these four rubber feet. Now, you need to screw those off if you want to gain access to the inside of it, and there are mounting points here. You can see for that bracket for the Visa mount, and here is the intake for the main cooler, so up to 80 watts performance. So there is along the back of it, you can see quite a big vent. That's where all the hot air is going to be coming out. So a lot of ports on this. I love the fact that it's got many on it. Kensington lock slot is right there. That's power in. Audio jack with mic support. Full spec up to 100 watts power delivery USB 4. So that's the 40 gigabits per second. We've got Oculink there. That's 63 gigabits per second. Two USB 2 type A's and two 2.5 gigabit LAN ports there. DisplayPort 1.4 and HDMI 2.1. So very good. It's not HDMI 2.0, which we sometimes still see. Uh, the power button does have a status LED reset there for the CMOS. And we've got another 3.5 millimeter with mic support, another full spec type C here too as well. And then Gen 2, USB 3.2. So Gen 2's there, you get the 10 gigabits per second out of those three ports there. And along the top, uh, nothing. So this part here is made out of alloy, but the rest of it is plastic. And well, I said nothing, there is this, the fan mode. So that is good for cycling through to put it into a lower performance mode, makes less noise. 80 watts, full performance, will be making a bit more noise. And I'll talk about that later in the review too. The fan noise with the thermals. Gaining access to the internals is not entirely impossible or difficult, really. So we have the four rubber feet that are here. You only need to remove those three, I realized, and then this slides off. That gives us access to the system fan, so we'll be able to easily clean this, which is really good without it having to completely tear it down. And flipping it over, we have the system fan. So this is a lower RPM fan here that is going to be cooling the SSDs inside and our RAM. So to get inside this, there are two screws right here where the rubber feet are, so you can prop it up like that. And you see along the top here, these are the two. So those screws have now been removed. This comes off and you want to have it facing towards you and just pull it up and then to the left, not the right, because there is this cable here. It's very easy to unplug that to get it out of the way. So I love the fact that it's super easy for us to go ahead right now and swap out the RAM. So the review unit they sent out to me here has the 64 gigabytes of RAM. Now this is DDR5 spec here. Uh, SODIMS, of course, and we've got uh, two of them pre-installed with ADATA, which is great. So ADATA is a known brand. And here we have a SSD that is PCIe 4 spec, one terabyte. You can add another two. So this screws in here and you can upgrade that wireless card if you didn't want the Intel wireless there. Maybe you want to go Wi-Fi 7. Uh, then you're able to do that. And it states here, BIOS version 
05 is what these are shipping out with at the moment. So if you want to go further to go to where the fan is on the other side, no point, only for cleaning or maintenance. There are four screws here, and then you have to remove that whole PCV and flip it around to clean it. I won't be doing that. So here we are in the BIOS. It is a completely unlocked BIOS. Uh, most of the settings are there. So if you're a tweaker like I am, you can go and tweak RAM timings. You can change power limits and do a lot of things. I'm not gonna show any of that here because I don't think it's necessary. The only setting we really want is this one here. So under main, it isn't balanced. Now balanced, it is 54 watts, okay? So I'm gonna change that to the power mode on the main menu here in the BIOS to performance, which I believe is 70 to 80 watts according to their promotional material here on the Evo T1. The other setting that I will show is an interesting one. If you go to advanced, find the system agent, SA configuration, and go to graphics. So here, if you wanted to, you could dedicate to that Iris XE, the 140T up to 32 gigabytes because I've got 64 installed of RAM. Uh, you could set 16, maybe eight, but I'm gonna leave it as default. So default, it will scale up to, I believe, could be wrong on this one, 32 gigabytes anyway. So I'm just gonna leave it as is. And so there we go. If you want it in the maximum performance, change it to performance. You've got quiet balanced. I don't know what quiet is. I think that's 25 watts only or something. So I'm gonna save this, and this is the profile I will use for the entire review. Here we are on Windows. So it does come pre-installed with Windows 11 Pro, not home. So that's good. You don't have to upgrade to get that particular version. Looking at the device manager, the network side of things. So the 2.5 gigabit LAN is from Realtek, both of those. And we do have that Ultra 9 285H. It's quite a good chip. It's 16 cores and 16 threads. So it's not multi-threaded that one. Turbo's up to 5.4 gigahertz. And we do have with it the ARC 140T. Sorry if I said Iris XE, because I'm so used to saying that from before, but it's very good for integrated graphics, as you'll see later with the gaming performance, especially. So I have run some benchmarks, and these are the ones I always do run with a mini PC review. Single core score, wow, really good. Over 3000 points there, multi-core score, this is around the level of what we see sometimes with those, well, the latest Radeon chips, um, the 370, the HX370, with its 24 threads in total can get similar kind of scores, but this has 16 cores and it's doing very, very well there. Graphic side of things, times by scores of over 4,000 points. This is better than the 890M, at least in these synthetic benchmarks with a graphic score nearing 3,800 points. And this puts it really on average, this chipset with what we've seen of other people running the same benchmark with the same kind of configuration here with that 285H. And finally, Night Raid, this one's designed for integrated graphics. Very good score. It's again, pretty much average for what that arc the PCI SSD, I do not know the brand of it, but it is PCIe 4.0 spec and the speeds, they aren't the fastest. This is typical. I'm not too sure if they do have the encryption enabled on this. That could be slowing it down a little. I mean, it's decent. I've seen a lot slower with some of these mini PCs. Now, video decoding all handled by the ARC 140T. And this is HEVC codec here, 140 megabits per second. Plays it just fine, very smooth playback. VP9, that's gonna be decoded, all of it really, really good. With this integrated graphics, it's not a problem. It's not like what it used to be like. Now, unlike some of the reviews on YouTube that seem to always be 100% positive no matter what, with some of the reviewers just failing to mention issues, I do mention them if I do experience them. And what I have experienced is some problems with the Type-C ports. And this is not a first for GMK Tech. It's happened to me on some of their other units. So if I decide that I want to move over some files, I just drag this whole, uh, okay, 60 gigabytes there over. This should start out really fast. Now you can see it's at 1.4 gigabytes per second. What I've noticed is that sometimes randomly that the port speed can go from being super quick with this external drive at the 40 gigabits per second 
to drop down to something that is extremely low. It doesn't seem to be doing it at the moment, but I did screenshot this problem. And you can see this is when it happened to me a couple of times from the same exact drive, moving similar files. It dropped right down to 387 megabytes per second, which is really not good. And I don't know why that's happened. Maybe it just needs a BIOS update, but I thought I would still mention it that I have experienced now and then some random speed issues with those USB 4 ports. 4K video editing with Adobe Premiere Pro is very good now on many PCs and it's been like this for well the last year, year and a bit because of the changes with the integrated graphics being a lot more powerful. Optimization also from Adobe has really improved and the timeline, it's not dropping any frames. 4K, this is a very basic video, basic edits, there's no grading going on and it is not an issue at all. Then the export times, they are very quick thanks to the Arc 140T graphics. It's using Intel's QuickSync and that really does not code quick. So I've got a minute of footage, the test that I always do. I'll hit start here on that timer and this should only take, I would say probably under a minute. In fact, what's gonna be well under a minute, that is really ripping through that incredibly quick. And I'll pause that as soon as that does stop. So you can see the Arc graphics at 100%. And the CPU, only about a quarter of it being used. So it's just ripping through this. Very easy job for it. So there we go. That was about, you could say, 22 seconds for one minute of footage. That is incredibly quick. And I've come to expect this now, as mentioned, with the optimization from Adobe and just how well integrated graphics does work now with video editing at 4K. Then on to gaming, so the Arc 140T, it's pretty potent for an integrated GPU, integrated graphics here. So you can game at 1080p with titles like The Witcher here. This is on, of course, the latest patch, and we'll see what kind of frame rate I can get out of this. Now it is set to the lower setting preset because really running medium or high, I think with integrated graphics is kind of pointless. You want the best frame rate possible. And we're getting so close to that 60 frames per second. In fact, it's just hit that 60 frames per second average around this area of the map. That is really impressive for integrated graphics. I can remember a few years back that it had to be always 720p and even then it would choke and it would only be around 30, 40 frames per second. But this, for low setting, 1080p running 60 frames per second in this more demanding area of the map, that is impressive. So really good performance here for integrated graphics, that is. Cyberpunk 2077. So I have it set to the low preset and I do have it at 1080p. Let's run the benchmark. That got a result of 43.82 frames per second average for 1080p. That isn't actually bad at all, again, for integrated graphics. So I really wanted to push it hard here and test out a game at 4K. So GTA 5, Enhanced Edition, and I do have it with the high preset at 4K. So that is super demanding for integrated graphics. Yet, I'm able to get around an average of 38, 40 frames per second. I don't think that's all too bad considering it is the high setting. It's the high preset that you can choose with the Enhanced Edition, which visually is looking really good. And yeah, I'm driving poorly here. But this is phenomenal for integrated graphics to be able to do this. The thermals with all the gaming and the benchmarks I've been running do turn out to be very good to a lot of the mini PCs lately. The ones I've reviewed in the past, well, the recent ones have gotten up to 98 degrees, even over 100 degrees Celsius, which is just not on, not good at all. But the cooling of this, GMK Tech, they've done a very good job because it can handle the 80 watts. You can see it gets the maximum temperatures of 82 degrees. Now, it didn't have any throttling on the cores, but the, the ring this did have. So thermal throttling on the ring was triggered. It did say yes for that. And it's obviously a low trigger point uh, because it only got up to the 83 degrees there. And looking at the wattage, you can see here that it gets up to and pulls around about 76 watts. It's like what they said, because they said 70 on the performance mode, 70 to 80 watts. So it's a power limit one of 70 watts, power limit two of the 80 there. And you could probably set this a little bit higher if you know what you're doing in the BIOS to go through to the performance and power configuration settings. I think even 90 watts it would be able to handle because it's only getting up to that 82, 84 or so degrees there, which is, is okay. There's still a little bit more room there. And the fan noise has been quite good. I'll give you a sample of that right now under full load. I 
I did briefly test out Linux Manjaro, and the odd thing was it wouldn't detect the Wi-Fi card, which is strange because this is an old card. It's not exactly new, and I've tested it on other mini PCs, and it's found the driver for it, and it's all worked. So it can detect the two LAN ports there, but not the wireless card for some reason. So there are going to be some driver workarounds depending on what distro you're using with Linux. All up, it's a great mini PC, especially that integrated performance, thanks to the Intel Arc 140T. Good performance for 1080p gaming, and you could even run 4K on lower kind of settings. I tested it on high with GTA 5 Enhanced Edition just to push it a little bit there. Now, there's no OcuLink video, unfortunately, from me section that showed me running it. And why is that? I do have an eGPU set up with OcuLink. I simply could not get it to work. I spent about 10 hours on this, wasted 10 hours, and I could see no error 43. I had no other reason to see why it wouldn't work. Device manager listed it as all being fine, but I could not output any video. It wouldn't detect a second display, being the OcuLink eGPU setup. Uh, the other one, of course, is the 140T, the Intel Arc integrated graphics. So I do apologize for that. Simply can't get it to work. I did encounter one other problem that I mentioned in this video, and that is that the Type-C ports are a little bit random. I didn't have any disconnects, which is a common issue that I sometimes seem to have reoccurring with small form factor PCs or mini PCs. That at least did not happen, but I saw the performance going from transfer rates of about 1500 megabytes per second down to only 300 or 400 for no apparent reason. It could be drivers, it could be it needs a BIOS update. I hope that GMK Tech can take a look at that and just, just fix it finally on the Evo T1. When they can do that, you've got yourself a fantastic mini PC, or well, small form factor PC here. It's not so many compared to some of the other models. And it is starting from 899 US dollars for the base configuration of it, which I don't think is too bad. Yes, it's expensive, but we are looking at latest generation chip here. And well, you know that Intel and AMD, they charge a lot for these chips now. So things are getting a little bit pricey there. So thank you so much for watching my review of the GMK Tech Evo T1.